You're watching Ride Like a Local with Belt Drive Betty. Voted as Canada's most rider-friendly community of the 2016 riding season is Port Alberni, British Columbia, home to one of the longest running toy runs in Canada, the Port Alberni Toy Run. Bordered on the east by the Beaufort Mountains and on the west by the Pacific Ocean, the Vancouver Island Riders Paradise, Port Alberni, is Canada's most rider-friendly community. Visit www.portalberni.ca to find out more. I'm being joined right now by two members of the Port Alberni Toy Run and on my left hand side is Jeff and on the right hand side is Dave and I'm interviewing them together to get the different perspectives of a new member compared to an older member of the club. So tell me, how long have you been a member with the club? I've been a member for about three years but I volunteered uh, when I was working I, I'd volunteer whenever I can. Ken, this time of the year to help out. And how long have you been volunteering? For about 10 years I've been you know, volunteering for off and on. Mm -hmm. What's your most enjoyable aspect of being part of the Toy Run Committee? Well, as far as the Toy Run Committee, I think I really, I really enjoy uh, uh, the, the reason why we do this. Uh, the reason why I personally do it is for the kids. That's our tagline, for the kids. So. That's what got me involved in the first place, even as a volunteer. And Dave, you've been with the Toy Run for how long now? Oh, it's about 20 years, I guess. Started in 1998, so uh, I wound up when I first came here, Gerard got me selling tickets and I had to become a member to sell the tickets for the flicker and that's, I've been stuck here doing <laughs> that ever since. And. Uh, <laughs> the, basically, what got me hooked was about oh, five years into being in the Toy Run member. Um, there was a little girl, about three years old, and she was native, and she wanted a little doll. And so we have these games, and everybody gets a gift. And so what happened was she kept trying, and then we kept moving her head until she finally got it. And we had about seven little dolls there that she could pick from and so she went over and she picked one doll and, and, gave, and took it and I was happy that she got it and so within about oh, three, four hours later we still had a lot of gifts left over so I went over to the little girl, I went and picked up another little doll for her and I thought well I'll give her another one because she was so excited about getting the, the first one and when I went over to give it to her she looked at me and she says I've got my doll I finally got a doll of my own and I says yeah and she said to her mom she says some other little girl would want that little doll so I'm gonna keep mine and you give it to some other little girl and that was it I've been hooked ever since it's a we have our arguments and things about set up and everything else and over the years we've got this tent that we got now which is a godsend before we had racks hanging off of here and we had stuff falling on people's heads and everything else and this is a Cadillac compared to that and I, 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 what I like about it is all of the money and everything that we raise all goes to the community and to all the kids and that's why I do it and I, I love it. Helping our children, there's nothing more noble is there? 
Yeah, I love it. Uh, you know, I, that's, I'm passionate about that. But I belong to other organizations in town, and even though there's a lot of community groups to belong to, my my interest is in, in uh, organizations that help kids. You know, for instance, like the Breakfast Club at the local high school, uh, uh, the Rotary Club, uh, they're focused on children in the valley, so I belong to organizations like that. And the Toy Run, you know, that's that's uh, really, really got me hooked is, like I said, the kids, uh, what we do for them. And how, how this group of, you know, people, they're, a lot of them are grandfathers now and they're still involved, so, so that shows their, <laughs> that shows their dedication and passion, you know, for what they do. Well, and, and when you have me members that have been here for 20 and 30 years on a 33-year toy run, it does show, you know, and it, the evolution, not just of yourself, but of the toy run, has got to be pretty impressive because I understand that like every other toy run that's pretty much started in Canada, it started with a half a dozen guys and an idea. Yeah, well, it's, you know what? Uh, when I, I joined, it was we started off in uh, Cathedral Grove, and there wasn't a lot of us. And then uh, a few years ago, we had a couple of really good years, and there was more of them. And now, well, like the last couple of years, we haven't had that many because of the weather being bad. But in the same instance, um, during the day um, of the ride, we have all kinds of things for kids to do. And you get to see the smiling faces of the, of the kids that you're working for to enjoy. And it's, it makes it really worth it. You know, it, you see a kid smiling, then it's great. Putting a smile on any child's face is important. Putting a, a smile on a child's face who thinks that they aren't going to get anything for Christmas, now that's something pretty special. It is, because I, I know, I know our, our organization, uh, you know, we get a lot of crests from, from different groups to, you know, do you have any toys for us? And, you know, we, we bend over backwards to, to find some toys for them, even though the majority of our toys go to the bigger organizations, but smaller organizations come to us and we're, we accommodate them if we can. I know for myself, um, many, many years ago, I lived in Merrill Lake, and um, that was my first um, uh, time of being involved with the Toy Run as a recipient, where my child and I, we were going through a bit of a bad patch and we got some help, and I'll tell you, it was a very humbling experience to be on the receiving end. And then, of course, for the next 27 years, all I did was pay it forward, right? A lot of these kids nowadays, um, it, they seem to be shuffled off to the side and, and they start working with the computers and stuff. And the inner communication that disappears where when we have the thing in the tomorrow, you'll see that everybody interacts and it's it's great it's good to see the community is part of one and it's good being a part of a bigger community is a very important aspect of being a, a member of any organization what aspect of the port alberni community do you love the most is it the the people is it the the charity and cause that you're working for what is it about being in this community and part of this Toy Run Association that makes your heart so happy? Well, I guess the, the community of Port Alberni, they're, they're, no, they're known as the community with the heart. I think that's number one and foremost, I guess. You know, uh, a lot of people in, in our community, uh, they help out others uh, through, through volunteer organizations, through donations, through, you know, and, you know, we've become uh, really family you know the community with the heart that's I think we're all like that in some sense that you know we want to help we want we want to help our, our neighbor we want to help our, our friends and want to help this disadvantaged people we want to help you know anybody that you know reaches out to us and I think that's that's uh, what I look at anyway and for you what do you think I think it's because it all comes together as a community and it, everybody comes from different uh, aspects of the life here and they all come together and we all have our f frustrations and everything else but 
all in all, it comes together good, and everybody is enjoys it. And the the more people that can enjoy it, it's better off we are. It looks to me like this community is a lot won the rider friendly community contest for a lot bigger reasons than just the fact that they are motorcycle friendly. I think that uh, a community with a heart just just starting to tip touch the tip of the iceberg here. When we come back, we'll be with more volunteers from the Port Alberni Toy Run for Ride Like a Local. The Spark Business Incubator is located in 214 Place and run by Community Futures Grand Prairie and Region. It can provide a new or expanding business with the supports to be successful. www.gpsparkincubator.ca We're here in Port Alberni, British Columbia, and we're getting ready for this toy ride tomorrow. And as you can see behind me, there's all kinds of equipment back and forth, people coming in, dropping off. Well, you just hand bombed how much alcohol? <laughs> An awful lot of liquor just got hand bombed, yeah. Yeah, and so there's, there's porta potties being delivered, there's uh, rodeo games all being set up. Everybody seems to just know what their job is. Yeah, we've got uh, a lot of longtime volunteers. Uh, we've got 33 years of history, and uh, some of those people have actually been around for pretty close to those 33 years. So we, uh, everyone has portfolios and things that they they do and specialize in, and teams that they lead, and and it's uh, it's always been a pretty well-oiled machine, and and we always get a lot of uh, compliments from riders uh, who are amazed at how well run and organized uh, this event is. And everybody takes what they do very, very seriously. And the thing that I've been enjoying from meeting all of the different uh, volunteers and members is the passion, the commitment, the dedication to this cause. Yeah, this is a special group. It's uh, a lot of people that, uh, that have been here, like I say, for quite a while. And um, they we're all friends. And we've, we spend a lot of time together, especially at this time of year and uh, we support each other and yeah it's a it's a it's a great team and it's uh the envy of many other organizations uh that aren't able to pull things off as as well as we have been able to because you know we're we've been a team for quite a while yeah and when you're a team for a long time and you're all united with one common goal your children and just making sure that they get the things that they need it's pretty easy when you because you you know all that other stuff is just chaff and you can get rid of it blow it out of the, the way and just focus in with laser precision on raising money raising toys and i didn't understand until i came here just the exact magnitude of what this toy run supplies for this area between the, the, the breakfast program at the high school to all of the different associations that you help and support. So let's talk about that a little bit. I don't think there's a, a children's charity or family event that we don't uh, support and fund or haven't uh, funded in some way over the years. Uh, we've built playgrounds, we've uh, restored pediatric dental services to the local hospital. Uh, we've done an awful lot of good in, in the Alberni Valley and throughout the West Coast. Sounds like it. 33 years. How many hundreds of thousands of dollars in toys do you think you guys have raised? I, I was looking through the scrapbooks that are like great big wooden covers and they're about oh two and a half three inches thick with these great big huge poster boards filled with the history of this toy run. How many hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of toys and money do you think you guys have raised? Well, we've, we've easily raised more than, uh, than uh, $1.5 million in cash and you could probably say at least that and, and, and then some more in terms of the value of toys. Um, so it's, it's, been a, it's been a great, uh, great experience and great uh, group of, of uh, charities that we've supported throughout the many years. I wonder what this community would do without you. 
Oh, this community is uh, it's pretty resilient, uh, and everybody you know comes together to to do all kinds of things. If you know if someone gets uh, diagnosed with uh, ALS, we throw a dance and build a house for them that uh, you know special to their needs. That's that's just what uh, the people of Port Alberni have always done and will continue to do. And it's like a like a, a bucket of sand. You put your hand in there, and when you pull it out, the sand fills in. So. I'm sure that there would have been uh, others to fill in where, where we haven't. How remarkable is that to feel that way about the community you live in? I, I wonder how many other people can say that about the community they live in. Well, I'm, I'm born in Port Alberni, but raised in Nanaimo and uh, moved back here about 20 years ago. And a lot of my friends uh, from Nanaimo uh, ask me about Port Alberni and I, I tell them, you know, it's like what Nanaimo was when we were kids where uh, everybody knew everybody and everybody pitched in. But now, you know, places like Nanaimo, people don't know who their next door neighbor is. They don't even talk to their neighbor. You don't get that in Port Alberni. Everybody, everybody knows your business, good, bad or otherwise. And uh, so, yeah, it's a real community. So is it kind of like the farming communities I grew up in? If you haven't heard a good rumor by 10 o'clock, you start one? Yeah, the rumor mill is the only mill in this town that never loses a shift. We're in beautiful Port Alberni, British Columbia, where we're getting ready for the Port Alberni toy run. And I'm being joined right now by two very avid riders, Sandy and Jackson. Sandy is from Nanus Bay and Jackson is from Nanaimo. Tell me why you guys are out here for this toy run. Well, I think it's a great cause to support. I've done it a few times now and I missed a few years. And this is Jackson's very first time. First time he's ever been on a motorcycle. And so he loves it. Wonderful. So you're enjoying being a, a motorcyclist? Yeah. And why did you decide to come for the toy run? Because I thought it would be nice helping other people. Geez, now there's hope for the future, eh? A young man, how old are you? Eight. Eight years old and he's already understands the importance of paying it forward and giving back into our communities that we live in. That's uh, pretty remarkable. Tell me how this young man got so smart. Oh, that would be from his mother and then his father, grandfather. Right, on. right, Jaden? <laughs> so mom and grandpa have really done a lot to instill in you some obviously good qualities, young man. Yes. That's very <laughs> nice. So what kind of a toy did you bring today? I didn't bring any. I forgot. Okay. This was a last minute thing, so we, yeah, we're just going to donate when we get there. Well, you know what? Cash is just as important as bringing a toy because then they can choose exactly what they end up buying, right? So that's pretty important. Yes. Right on. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming all this way up here for this toy run. That sounds like a great idea. Yep. <laughs> you think you're going to buy your own bike soon? Yes, probably. I don't See, know there's, a, think there's a convert <laughs> right there, folks, and isn't that wonderful? Eight years old, first time on a motorcycle, knows he wants to be part of it. That's awesome. Thank you so much for taking some time with me, Jackson. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning from beautiful Port Alberni, British Columbia, where I'm being joined by some of my brothers from the CAV. And uh, tell me a little bit about why you guys decided to come out for this amazing toy run. Uh, it's all about uh, supporting the kids. Uh, a lot of our members come up here uh, yearly. Uh, we have some people have their eight year in a row coming up here, and uh, it's all about uh, getting together and supporting the community. So what is it about supporting our kids that's so important to you guys? Uh, it's all about the future of the kids, uh, you know, give them a good support forward. Um, our CAV motto is uh, have fun, ride, have fun, and support uh, others. others. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I make him nervous and you know what, it feels so good to be female, put him in front of a camera and this this very motto man goes just like a, a, a you know he's jello in my hands literally <laughs> so tell me i saw you a few weeks ago in regina and we had an amazing uh three cab rally out there what was the ride back like for you guys uh the ride was pretty good uh, myself i took a different route uh i, I said uh goodbye to everybody i went southwards and uh Caught the uh, tail end of the uh, cleanup at uh, Sturgis and uh, took a nice ride back. Oh, that was nice. I ended up having to head straight home. Mind you, I did take a little detour through D Drumheller. 
and that was pretty nice. So let's let's get a couple of you other guys up here. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Bulldog, you get in here. Banjo, where are you? Come on up. Okay. So these are some of my brothers from the Canadian Army Veterans Motorcycle Units. And uh, tell me, Banjo, you said you uh, started out this morning at about 6, 6.30 to come here? Yeah, I managed to get half a day off work and worked until 6 a.m. and just came straight up. I had no idea I was going to make it to the ride today, so it's a bonus. Bought some plush toys uh, this morning and get some uh, new toys for the kids for Christmas. That sounds wonderful. And what about yourself? When did you head out? We headed out uh, yesterday morning, about uh, about noon, right? So uh, we hooked up uh, just in, in Coombs with the rest of our crew, which was kind of nice. And about a dozen bikes rolled into, into port about 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. And where are you guys staying in Port Alberni? We're down at the Sumas Motel. We pretty much take it over. You'll hear them. Okay, so the Sumas Ho Hotel is uh, where a lot of my brothers and sisters are. I'm at the Barclay. Um, right now, I'm looking at this parking lot. When we got here this morning, do you remember how much space there was here? There wasn't. <laughs> there was all kinds of space. In about 10 minutes, this fills up. Yeah, like it's crazy. How many get bikes do you think are here? You got a guess? Uh, we got about probably four or 500 here already. There's about 100 here when I got here. I think they're going for 1500 this year. Absolutely. It's nice and sunny. And, and I think it's going to stay beautiful. It looks like the forecast is uh, working in their favor for a change this year. What is your favorite aspect of being at a toy run? It's just, uh, it's, a, it's a good time for everybody. You get to talk to like the different groups, like I said. Uh, everybody has the same goal in mind. Get the kids, make them, you know, get something for the kids, make them all happy for, for the run. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, what about you? I got to be honest, the best part about this is going to be the thunder run. <laughs> the thunder of 1,500 motorcycles of all makes and models coming together with one like mind to make children in the Alberni Valley and throughout all of this region of Vancouver Island to make sure they have a good Christmas and that moving forward they also get breakfasts at school and all kinds of amazing things that this Toy Run Association does. One final question. From here, where do you guys head to? Uh, we're going back to the hotel after this. We'll spend the night and then tomorrow morning we'll take off probably about 9 a.m. and head for home. So you're not gonna stay for the poker run or the pancake breakfast or any of that other stuff that happens That's tomorrow? That's pretty much up to all the individuals, right? But for the most part, no. We'll, uh, what we usually do every year is uh, go down to Coombs, down to, the, down to the goats on the roof, have a little brunch there, and then head for home make a really sweet journey out of it i take it and you is that what you plan on doing as well no sadly i've got horses to feed so i'll be uh, done when we're done in port alberni and racing back down to victoria to keep the animals happy well at least i got a chance for a hug so that's it next time we come back we will be out on the toy run here in port alberni british columbia Community Futures Grand Prairie and Region can assist small business with financing, training, and advisory services. We're here to help small business in rural Alberta. Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, home to the Cabot Trail and the Cape Breton Bike Rally. With some of the most magnificent riding and the friendliest of people one can find anywhere, Cape Breton is the runner-up community in Canada's most rider-friendly community contest. Visit CapeBretonBikeRally.com to find out why. I'm being joined right now by one of the men who was quite instrumental in the town of Port Alberni, or the city of Port Alberni, I should say, winning Canada's most rider-friendly community contest. And his name is Dave Chamberlain, and he owns a business called Mr. Potato Head, and now he's added and misses because he just recently got married. So congratulations on getting married. And um, tell me a little bit about how you got involved with Canada's Most Rider-Friendly Community Contest and the voting frenzy that you guys went through in competition with Drum Heller. As, as a community, uh, Port Albany always comes together when we have uh, something like that to go into. And Mr. Petito in particular, we love to support this town. So anything the town's involved in, we usually get involved in. And when we saw the, the voting, which was started by the, the Toy Run people, 
we joined in and the community just jumped on board. And it was just from there, it just took off. It was just absolutely wonderful to see the community come together like that. It sounds to me a lot like what Bob Ross from Two Hills had explained to me after they won the contest. And he said, he explained it, that it was a wonderful community building exercise. Does that feel right for you as well? Oh, that feels exactly right. We've made a lot of friends through that competition, but they're still friends now. Even though the competition's finished, they're still friends and good friends. Uh, lots of these people came to our wedding which probably wouldn't happen if it had not been for your competition. That's wonderful, but you know, I got to say something. You guys might have rallied as a community and worked really hard, and I know you worked really hard on the voting end of things because Drumheller gave you a run for your money. But today, riding through this community, seeing how many people treated this as if it was a, a Santa Claus parade. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. For, this, for the town it is, it's something very, very special for us. And the, the whole town folk turn out to, to watch the toy run. Something everybody looks forward to. Well, after 33 years and all of the money that they have put into this community, not, and you know, this is the beautiful thing about this toy run, is it brings riders in from Victoria and Nanaimo and Lanceville and Ladysmith and all over this island, Courtney, Cumberland. And this money is coming into the Alberni Valley. It's not mm -hmm. like you're recycling your own money right here in the valley, right? And it, ben it benefits the, the whole island. Everybody comes down the island from Victoria or wherever, and it benefits everybody in the, on the island. That's why everybody on the island got together to, to help us to win this. We're a small town, we couldn't have done it alone against Drumheller, but with the help of all our neighbors, we did. Teamwork. Yes, that's teamwork. Some, that's something bikers are pretty good at. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. That's, I mean, it's, just, it's just been an awesome day. We, as, as a business, it's been awesome for us, and it's just awesome to see that many people and the sun shining on them, and it's just been a great toy run, as, as it always is. Yes, and you were explaining to me that even in the rain, these bikers come out here, four or five, six hundred of them? Yes, yeah, it doesn't matter about the weather. These, it, this is for the kids, and Port Alberni will do anything for the kids, as will Mr. Potato, that's what we do. We love kids, uh, you know, th th especially the bikers. I mean, th people don't associate bikers with kids, but I mean, just, they, they've all got big hearts, and they come out, no matter the weather, doesn't matter, they come and they ride. Not as many as today, but a lot of bikers come out. I don't know, man. I, I was watching that line of motorcycles stretch for block after block after block. And the, and, and the people that were lining the streets waving and, and, and the signs, thank you, Toy Run. Um, our kids, thank you. I don't think unless you come here to Port Alberni and experience it, that even the film we have to offer you is going to give you even a tenth of what should be filling your heart. It's just amazing. So when we come back, we're going to be talking to one of the former chairman of the Port Alberni Toy Run. I'm being joined right now by Scott Loudon. He is one of the former chairmen of the Port Alberni Toy Run. And so he's got a pretty interesting perspective on this toy run history-wise to offer to us tonight. Tell me a little bit about the history of this toy run. Well, when I started the toy run, uh, my brother had been in the first ride. And then the, we missed a year, then the, got together and decided to do it all again. And we decided we'd canvas the town and see if we could get some donations to try and make it a little bit bigger. We're probably almost up to 10 bikes. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, we started trying to canvas some of the bigger outfits. They wouldn't say hi or nothing to us. <laughs> so we stopped in at a little corner store and they gave us a dartboard for a kid. So we went from there, we went to every little store in this whole town. And that started off, and it just grew and grew and grew, and everybody was having a good time. We just made it uh, biker friendly. Um, for 27 years, I played this game, or whatever you want to call it. And, um, 
it, it, there's just so many perspectives that have come down to helping kids. Yeah. It's just been outrageous. Um, we we worked with different clubs, different organizations. I've seen a kid in a wheelchair that couldn't walk. Uh, we bought a bunch of medical equipment, a uh, bunch of physiotherapy. And one year a, a kid came up to me and gave me a hug. And that was the same boy that was in a wheelchair. Now, if you want to see a biker break down, well, I was screwed. <laughs> see, there's another thing that I brought in. We supply buses for our patrons. Okay, so uh, that's a pretty big thing that people yeah. can shuttle without having to drink and drive. We do everything to make this year for a rider to come in here with a, um, a, a little bit of money in their pocket. We go around, we, we've gone to all the businesses. Uh, for rooms, motels, hotels, and ask them to cut the cost. We're going to extend their summer program into September. If they would do us a favor, cut the cost, we'll make this as big as we can. And we've had up over 1,600 bikes on the road, through the run, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And our hotels, motels, they're all, they put out, they've just done an awesome job. They, they cut the cost in half for a guy to come here and stay for a day. Yep. It's been awesome. I mean, the, the things that they do. They put out guards for the bikes so the guys can relax yep. and their bikes are protected while they're in the hotel at night. We have shuttle services that brings people to and from the Toy Run um, dance. Yep. So they're not having to run all over Hell's Half Acre. Yep. Um, I've been to other Toy Runs not against them. I've been to other events, not against them again because they have their own thing. This is our thing. We take care of our guys as best we can and uh, it's appreciated by the turnout. Yeah, I would say so because you look at, at people that come here and the different people that I've interviewed and talked to, you know, they're working on their 14th or their 15th toy run. It's not like They've come here once and then don't come again for three or four years. They're coming year after year after year. We have people from California, from Oregon, from all over the United States that come up here that make it a point to stop in here or pass the word on. Yeah. And they pass the word on because when you come here, you're going to be treated right. And Port Alberni has always had a tongue with a heart and uh, we're in desperate need with our children. We know that. There's... It, it's really a poverty town. And this is one thing that sort of pulls it out of that. And uh, it was designed with uh, the membership saying enough's enough, we're just gonna have a really good event, old rock and roll, let's make it happen. No fights, no hassles, no colors. Yeah. And it worked. And you know, if, if there was one thing that happened you know, out of this whole thing was it worked. Uh, with all the membership and everybody getting together. They made it work, and, and it's really good that they did. Well, in 33 years, I mean, it's uh, one of the oldest toy runs in Canada. It's a good-sized one for the fact that your city's, what, 30,000 people? Uh, no, not that high. No? 20,000, if we're lucky. Okay, so your 20,000 trading area be what? What's your, your normal trading area, your normal draw? What we're drawing from is probably maybe 600 bikes. That's about all you would get out of the valley. Okay, so the other seven, 800 have come from elsewhere. Well, Nanaimo, yeah, Victoria. Oh, yeah, Nanaimo, Victoria, and then off the mainland. The BC Ferries is, is trucking bikes over here. We've had actually, BC Ferries one day had a special sailing just for bikers, just to ha get them over here. Pardon me? They had a special sailing to get the riders here. When did they do that? Uh, that was about eight, nine years ago. Geez, might be time to canvas them to do that again because this run is becoming a very um, well-attended run. I I've been told that even in times of rain, you'll have upwards of five or 600 bikes. Oh yeah, no less. It, it's no, in times of rain or whatever, we still get a good turnout. And that's that's unheard of. Most places, um, the fair weather riders, they won't come out for something like this, even though it is a good cause. So obviously there's something very special 
about what Port Alberni does. And I got to tell you what I think it is. Yes, you guys treat your visitors well. When they come to your dance, everybody's, everybody feels cared for and looked after, etc. in there. But I got a feeling, what I witnessed in town on the ride, <laughs> I got a feeling that's why everybody does it. It's the whole town. It's it, not one it, person. Exactly. This whole city comes out and there's all these signs, thank you riders, and, and all these people out there cheering and, and whistling and hollering and your heart just swells with pride to be part of it. I've been to rides in different different cities. I don't want to name them, but um, there's been enough noise coming from the bike that uh, we've had people waking up, throwing the windows up and throwing beer bottles at us. Yeah. And uh, not a poor coffee cup. But seriously, um, I, I think that seeing how the town embraces the rider, I, I got a feeling that's, you know. When we first started this place, the town did not embrace us. We were the bikers, we were the bad, the cops hated us. Uh, we had uh, nothing but the Vancouver squad coming over here, taking pictures of the back of our bikes, uh, taking license number, checking everybody out. Um, the town really didn't want it to happen. A um, few conversations with them, a little bit of proof of what we could do and what we were trying to do. And uh, all of a sudden it was, why hell, we're a logging town, give it a shot. So they gave us a shot. We, um, we produce, all you have to do from the, is take a look on the streets when you're riding to this town, man. It's all the whole town is out there. This isn't one or two people. No. You're only talking 20,000 people and you got damn near that many people on the side of the road cheering you on. I'm sorry, when you see signs and you're riding down, I'm front of the pack usually. I haven't been, I have issues anyway. But you're riding at the front of the pack and you get big signs saying thank you. You get the Grinch dressed up at the top of the hump. You get everything that you can imagine. People trying to run out in the streets, which can sometimes can be a little bit of a problem and disastrous, yeah. but everybody wants to shake your hand. Oh, this is our crowd, this is, this is it. This is what we're doing, and this is how you're accepted. And yeah, it's great. Well, I know for myself, I was very moved to see the volume of people out there that are thanking the riders for coming and doing this. And then when you ride into here, you go into that recreation center and you see all them little rugrats. And they're eating popcorn and, and cotton candy and playing games and just having a ball. It's all free for kids. And everything that's done for the kids is free and it's a totally amazing experience. If you've never been to the Port Alberni Toy Run, you must do. It's a must do. Put it on your bucket list. The Port Alberni hey. Toy Run is the best way to be. Hey. <laughs>